Greetings, good people. Greetings. Happy Monday. It is September 11th. The year is 2023. How's everybody feeling today? Okay. This is it's Hot Topics time. All right. I want to talk about Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B's video. Okay. That debuted on Friday, Thursday night, Friday. You know what it is. Uh, the VMAs. The VMAs are airing on Tuesday, which is weird. I thought the VMAs were airing last night on Sunday, but apparently not. They're airing on Tuesday. That's odd. Kamala Harris is in the news. Joe Buttons had some harsh critique from Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B, and I'm going to get into all of that, all right? Before we get into the Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B bongos and all that good stuff, I want to talk about y'all vice president, okay? <sighs> vice President Kamala Harris, right, hosted a very interesting event at her residence, okay? The 50th anniversary of hip hop is this year. Hip hop is 50 years old. And Kamala Harris had some interesting guests, all right? Um, <laughs> she had Lil Wayne over there. She had Fat Joe presented her with some sort of an award. So basically, Kamala Harris had a, a cookout and invited tons and tons of black people, okay? You guys know that she is fighting for the black vote. The Democrats are fighting for the black vote. So Ka Kamala is, is, is black this month and she'll probably be black for the next couple of months, all right? Now I know some of you are like, Kamala is black. She went to an HBCU, she pledged AKA. Ask her to see her driver's license. Ask her to see her driver's license and what she identifies as, okay? So let's get into this article. Uh, this is courtesy of Politico, and it reads, Vice President Kamala Harris celebrated 50 years of hip-hop's influence on American arts and culture Saturday, honoring the genre's prominent black roots uh, as the Democratic ticket seeks to retain the community's support in their 2024 election bids. Of course, election time is around the corner, so what better way than to get the black vote than to shuck and jive over a hip-hop beat, right? Remember what Joe Biden said to you guys years ago? If you don't vote for him, you're not black. So Kamala says that hip-hop is the ultimate American art form, okay? Uh, she also quoted Chuck D. <sighs> you know, I can't deal with Hot Sauce Harris. I really can't. Where the hell has she been all this time? She's been fairly quiet, and now she emerges from wherever the heck she was at, and she dancing and shucking and jiving, all right? Don't believe me, just watch. Look look, look at y'all vice president. Hey, okay, she dancing to vibrant thing, all right? Look at her. Yes, you you go. Fat Joe was in attendance. Remy Ma was in attendance. Lil Wayne performed. Common was there. Very interesting. This is Lil Wayne, Remy Ma performing Fat Joe. This is at her house. She had a concert. She had a cookout, y'all. And she invited everybody to the cookout. Okay, this is Fat Joe gifting her some Nike Air Force Ones. I just, I can't with him. I I, I never got into Fat Joe. Mm -mm. Never got into Fat Joe. So what do you guys think about your vice president, Hot Sauce Harris, celebrating 50 years of hip hop? Her husband also said that this is a hip hop household. This is what her husband said. She professed her love for hip hop on this 50th milestone. She also said that Tupac was her favorite rapper that was alive. Remember, y'all remember that? Whatever, Hot Sauce Harris, you guys can do with that whatever you want. This is the same old tactics that those Dems use each and every time it's time to get your vote. Now listen, she may be a lover of hip hop, but this is the very first time that I've seen her express her love for hip hop in this manner. How convenient. All right, let's move along. All right, y'all. I don't know if you guys saw this. I did post this to, post this to my community uh, wall. So shout out to everybody who took a look at my community wall on my YouTube page. So it's being rumored that the brick lady lied, okay? I don't even know if that's the truth, but I'm gonna say something. I was called a pick me. Not that I care, me of all people. It doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't mean anything to me. That's a made up word. Um, that doesn't mean anything at all, but whatever. So I was called a pick me. When I first heard this story and I saw this woman's video, I said to myself, and then I also said out loud, you know, around the kitchen table crew, I said, 
that doesn't look like she got hit with a brick. And now I, I have common sense. All right. I've also taken biology courses, anatomy and physiology courses, etc. A brick. What kind of brick? Maybe I should ask that question. Is it a traditional brick? Was the brick made out of paper? Was it made out of clay? Was it made out of seafood? What was the brick made out of? So is it a regular cement brick? Because if you get hit with a cement brick, fill in the blank. You can believe whatever you choose to believe, okay? But it's all over Twitter. People are doing TikToks. I saw a video where her medical records were shown. When since do we do that? When when does medical staff release a patient's medical records on TikTok legally? I don't know, whatever, whatever. So here are some tweets, some comments that people are making regarding this situation, all right? This is one video. Remember this woman who was hit in the face with a brick? Even though it appears that she's having the same allergic reaction she was having in this video. I think this woman set this entire thing up as a hoax. In fact, actually, I know it was a hoax. Oh. Coincidentally, every few years, she gets attacked in the face by a random stranger, fails to make a police report, but makes a GoFundMe and garners thousands of dollars. Here was her first one. And her second one in 2020, where she garnered $41,000. Here's the video she used to sucker people into that money. You up, and they mad because you trying to fucking be somebody. They mad because you trying to be somebody. I'm trying to be a doctor, and they mad. Look what they did to me. Look what they did to me for no reason. They don't beat me up. I'm 30 years old. They don't beat me up. Interesting. So not once, not twice, but three times you got beat up by strangers, strange black men, didn't make a police report, but made a GoFundMe. And then conveniently, when the $41,000 has probably run out, now you're back at it again, using black men as these monsters to your fucking scheme and using a very serious issue that's not taken seriously enough, which is violence against women, as some sort of, like, leverage to your hoax. It's all right, we ain't gonna watch this whole video. It's all over Twitter. Look, I just typed in Brick Lady Lied. I saw a post. Uh, the person who owns the club where this alleged incident happened stated, well, they didn't give a statement. It was stated that they claim that there was no evidence, yada, yada. Listen, in the social media age where everyone takes out their smartphones when danger arises, um, I'm not saying she's lying. I'm not saying that she's telling the truth, but from what I seen, okay, to me, it does not look like to me that she got hit in the face with a brick. Could she have been assaulted? Sure. Very well possible. But what I don't like is this. I don't like that when people come out with their stories and some of us are not quick to believe these stories we are labeled pick me's whatever the hell that really means uh we're labeled uh misogynist yes because women can be misogynist too i'm not a misogynist um and all other things i'm trying to figure out like what dimension y'all live in people lie don't they so because i choose not to believe something that i hear on the internet or see on the internet right away without some additional footage or additional proof that makes me crazy people lie every day people get scammed every day look at what just happened with carly russell look what happened with her so because i know that people lie and i don't trust anyone or anything that comes out of anyone's mouth I don't hold anything against anyone, but I just, I don't believe people because people have the ability and the capability to lie. That makes me weird. Listen, if that lady lied or told the truth, that's, that's between her. I didn't, I didn't donate any money to her. Um, because like I said, I wanted to see how this all played out. I know how social media is and what ended up happening is you have foundational FBA, foundational black Americans versus non-FBA. That was a fight on Twitter. Men against black men against black women. That was another fight. So the media ultimately won because it created division now. And now it's come out that it's a lie. And then some people are saying that it's not a lie and it's true and it's not true. And she's scamming people. All, all confusion. So once again, the enemy won, right? Um, but yeah, just because someone comes on 
social media and says xyz happened to me i don't automatically believe you i don't automatically not believe you either i just take it for face value it is what it is and if i choose to do any further investigation then i do so if not then i just leave it right where it is but i'm not gonna just believe someone because they said it especially a stranger <laughs> what who does that anyway 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 let's get into cardi b and megan the stallion so bongos is out um what do you guys think about bongos here's what i did i listened to the song first without the video and then i went back and watched the video now when i listened to the song i said yikes this is just straight out the gate just vulgar okay whatever i didn't know what to expect i wanted to be uh pleasantly surprised um i'm not mad at the song and i like i don't hate it i don't it's a, it is what it is it is what it is i know a lot of people have a lot of critiques but let me just talk about mine uh the song itself i listened to the words I got more excited about Cardi's verse or more pleased with Cardi's verse as the song progressed. But the first, like right out the gate, I was like, which way is she going? I don't understand this hook. Did we, did she take it to the bridge? I was confused. The structure of the song on her, her verse, it's like, hold on, what? I have to catch up. I don't get it. Then <laughs> Megan comes in. Megan just effortlessly rides the beat. Her cadence is top tier i love i like meg the stallion megan the stallion is my girl like that's a rapping rapper right there right and i did like her cadence on the song i listened to what she was saying eh, she's probably throwing a couple of shots at people we don't know it could be for anyone um but i know how you like to pin the rap girlies against each other and y'all like to hype up the beef it is what it is it creates engagement so i do like megan's verse better i'm gonna be honest i like megan's cadence her flow i like her delivery better 10 out of 10. now when i watched the video oh the video was giving everything that it was supposed to give everything that it was supposed to give so this is cardi's look she transitioned to a pink look everything about this was top tier the video itself was a 10 out of 10 this is another look and then if you look in the fridge when she was drinking uh from a can it said minute made on it brand heavy okay colin carter did the damn thing colin carter is um cardi b's stylist cardi get your foot out the freezer that's so ghetto okay giving very much colors on the beach i love this look i love all the colors i'm a color girl i said this before oh poochie poochie okay she did her darn thing um very again brand heavy so she did her her thing okay a lot of looks cardi was giving us choreography which i can appreciate because that's not easy okay so it just shows that she's you know working hard face look good and then here come my girl megan the stallion first of all megan the stallion looks absolutely positively gorgeous she's giving me ooh, ladies first queen latifah vibes here okay body is sickening if you go to colin carter's um instagram page you can get a better look these this video doesn't even do these outfits justice and they they look good but you can get a close-up uh visual of the fashions okay oh uh, meg looks absolutely stunning and if you guys notice that looks like the same mansion or i think it's been confirmed that that is the same mansion that uh beyonce performed in front of in black is king haha -ha. so that's dope the dancers look great meg look great meg's choreo was great look at her hair her makeup visually this is a 10 out of 10. okay she gave us choreography different looks twerking doing your thing and then they dance they ended up dancing together some people said they look like the fanta girls from the fanta commercial again a recognizable brand uh baby boy beyonce i there's nothing negative i have to say about this video at all at all this was cute this was absolutely cute they look like they had fun um they look like they worked hard this is one of my favorite looks of the video
This outfit is insane. So all in all, Cardi and Meg did the darn thing. I think they did an absolutely great job. Um, they both look great. So shout out to them. Um, now, a lot of people had criticism for them. <sighs> Joe Button did not care for the song, okay? So according to Joe Button, this song was two packs of a double s this is what joe budden said so let's listen to what joe budden had to say and then i'm going to share my thoughts like did here go for me it's not catchy it's not particularly it's catchy. not there's nothing there's nothing in it to make it stay one and two i know y'all think sexy red is paying me she's not but this commercialized ratchet has passed <laughs> It's ghetto ratchet time. And neither one of them are ghetto ratchet on this song. I First of all, commercialized ratchet will, anything with commercial, commercialized will never be out of style. I don't believe that Joe Button believes what he's saying. I know that sounds crazy. Shout out to Joe Button, my fellow New Jersey native, okay? You guys know that if you don't know, Joe Button is a rapper, was a rapper, I guess. He's now a media mogul. Um, his hit, Pump It Up, very commercialized. It's 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 notoriously synonymous with uh, uh, You Got Served, the video You Got Served. That came out in 2000. Congratulations. That song just went gold. That's no shade. I thought it was triple platinum, but whatever. I don't believe that Joe Button is telling the truth here. I don't believe it. Joe Button has become someone who I respect in the media space. And no, I don't always agree with him. As far as his personal life, that's his business. But as it pertains to commentary, um, I don't agree with him all the time, but I understand his perspective. This, to me, made no sense coming from him. Let me see if there's a little bit more. I don't want to play the whole thing. I think they both have potential to be. And Cardi normally smokes Ghetto Ratchet, but she's too big that's why she got to go get with K-Flock. That's why she got to go get with some of the... She's too big to do it. We need a Bodak Yellow now. Both of these women... This sounds like this is two women who can't make a song. Is what it sounds like. I disagree with that. Um, first of all, Cardi B is a brand. When he says... He mentions Sexy Red and he says that it's ghetto ratchet time. Cardi B has done that already. Hello? her mixtapes she's done all of that she's done all of that cardi b is a brand and i know that joe budden knows this cardi b is a whole brand she just gave you point me to y'all didn't do any critiques on that she gave y'all put it on the floor the remix that she did with lotto y'all wasn't sweating that tomorrow too with glorilla y'all like that she just did the song. She she also did the song was that that was last year that he mentioned with K Flock. Like she 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 does all of that stuff and she has done all of that. But Cardi B, the brand, she's always gonna go the commercial route. WAP was commercial. Just because it's it's ghetto ratchet time, doesn't mean that Cardi has to give you ghetto ratchet all the time. She's going to mix it up. And trust me, I think that this song is going to do well. I know a lot of people who don't like Cardi B agreed with what with everything that Joe Button says, even though a couple of weeks ago they couldn't stand him, right? Because of his critiques of certain female rappers, whatever. But I don't believe that Joe Button believes what he is saying. I think he's saying it for shock value. He said these two women sound like they, they can't make a song. I don't agree with that. But then you turn around and say that this is WAP 2.0. But did WAP sound like Megan and Cardi couldn't make a song? Anything commercial is never going to go out of season or out of style. Like I said, Cardi just gave you Point Me Too. That was a feature that she did with uh, the young lady Fendi. I'm not sure what her name is. That wasn't ratchet. That was very ratchet. That wasn't ratchet enough. Commercial ratchet is always going to be a thing. Like, are you kidding me? 
Joe knows that. Joe understands this business. He understands the music industry. His other gripe was that they need Partisan Fontaine. He thinks that this song is dated. That part I can agree with. I think that this is a song that they probably had before or Cardi had before that she was sitting on. And she asked Meg to jump on it. Or this is a song that they actually had because it was supposed to be a follow-up to WAP 2.0. And because of everything that was going on, you know, with the Tory Lanez trial, et cetera, they held, they held on to it. I do think that the video helped the song. Um, it's getting a lot of TikTok buzz. We'll see where it lands on the charts. But my question is, what is it, what is it that y'all wanted Cardi to do? Like y'all wanted Megan Cardi to diss other female rappers. I think that's what y'all wanted. Like y'all wanted her to diss other female rappers. Cause I know a lot of you are waiting for like a, 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 e, a Nas ether type record from Cardi B. I'm actually waiting for a Nas ether record type record from Megan the stallion. Cause I think Megan the stallion will be more inclined to put out a diss record, dissing everybody. I'm waiting on that. And that quite frankly needs to be her next single, but that's a different story for a different day. Like, I don't get it. And I do think that Cardi is going to be criticized heavily because there's a lot of people that don't like her. That's fine. She should be used to that by now, but she's not. Um, and I think that she second guesses herself a lot. She said that WAP wasn't going to go on her second album, which I think she totally dropped the ball. I do think that she should have put out an album by now, but I don't think her career will be over because she hasn't. She did stay on The Breakfast Club that she's pushing her album back to 2024. It is what it is, you know? And I do feel like the expectations are really high for certain female rappers. Um, and you got these male rappers putting out mediocre bars, if you want to even call them bars. But I understand female rappers are dominating right now. They're in the lead. So they're under a microscope. Um, I do think Cardi needs to like just do what she needs to do the way she wants to do it. Listen to the criticism, but I don't think it should penetrate her to the point where it affects her craft. And I think that has what that's what's been happening the past couple of years. You know, she's starting to second guess herself. Is the song A double S? Nah. I think I think I think Joe Button is capping hard. I think he's capping so hard. I don't think he believes a lot of what he says because then you would have followed up with what is it that you expect? If you want ratchet, ratchet, non-commercial ratchet, again, she gave you that with Fendi, the, the girl she did the collaboration with. Point me too. She did that already. She's not in the running to compete with sexy reds and stuff. Why would she compete with them? Cardi can easily make music like that. Cardi wants the money. She wants the international success. She wants her songs to cross all genres, just like WAP did, just like Bodak Yellow did. So I guess we shall see. Joe, Joe Budden has been wrong many, many times as it pertains to, uh, to Cardi, as it pertains to Nicki Minaj, as it pertains to Meg Thee Stallion. And I find that a lot of the people that agree with him are individuals who don't care for Cardi B. And that's totally fine. And there's some people who are Meg Thee Stallion fans who agreed with him, and that's fine. But I don't, I don't know. I think you guys are waiting for Cardi B to say things like, I'm the queen. Cardi B has never mentioned that she's the queen of anything. I think she knows that she's not the queen. You know, she's come a long way. She's progressed. You know, she set the bar. She set the standard as it pertains to visuals, live performance visuals, music videos, things like that, fashion, you know, um, brand deals. So I, I don't know. What do you want her to come out and say? Like, F all you female rappers. I'm the best. I'm the queen. I, I don't think she's going to do that. That wouldn't be on brand for her. And that's it's just what would that do? Anyway. Let's move on to the VMAs, all right? First of all, the VMA streaming on a Tuesday is wild, all right? But it is what it is. Cardi B will be performing. Uh, it has been announced that Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion will be performing their song, um, Bongos. I'm assuming that they're probably going to have like a whole 
transition. They're going to be doing WAP and transition into bongos. That's how I see it in my head. Either way, I'm excited to see visually how this pans out. Uh, Nicki Minaj is going to be hosting. I'm looking forward to seeing that. And Nicki Minaj is also going to be performing. Now, I'm sure Nicki Minaj is getting a bag for hosting, but I, um, if I'm not mistaken, okay, um, it's always been said that the performers at these award shows don't get paid to perform. So shout out to Nicki Minaj for performing and hosting. So that is going to be interesting. Doja Cat is supposed to be in the building as well performing. This is going to be very, very interesting. Now, I wonder, are they going to make sure that all of the ladies are far, far, far away from each other? <sighs> Whoever works behind the scenes, I'm pretty sure that they are going to be busy and excited at the same time. If anything goes down, I'm pretty sure it will hit social media. All right. Diddy, he is being Shakira and Diddy. They are both going to be receiving the top honorary award, the Video Vanguard Award and the Global Icon Award. OK, Shakira's getting the video. It's the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award. Nicki Minaj was the recipient last year of that award the global icon award is going to be going to diddy now diddy is supposed to be performing as well now you guys know recently he quote unquote gave back the publishing to his previous artists some of them anyway mace being one of them so i'm wondering is this going to cause mace to join diddy on stage um that bet where he received the whatever award it was that he received that bet last year that performance where he brought out Shine, it was whack. I, I, I thought that it would have been a heavier tribute because Diddy worked with a lot of artists, but a lot of his artists are no longer with us. And a lot of the artists are not on good terms with him. So so this is going to be um this is going to be interesting. Little Wayne and Metro Boomin are also on the performance lineup. Metro Boomin will be joined by Future, A Boogie with the Hoodie, Sway Lee, and NAV, Nav, who the heck is that? Uh, and the show is set to have a 50th anniversary salute to hip hop. Is Kamala going to be there? Okay, following the lead uh, of many other award shows in the past year. Okay, hip hop fans aren't the only audience being served by this year's VMAs. Latin music fans can look forward to performances by Anita, Carol G. Oh, I want to see Carol G's performance and Anita and Peso Pluma. Did I say that right? And again, Shakira, she's going to be getting the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award. Okay. Pop fans may tune in for Doja Cat, Olivia Rodrigo, shout out to her, and Demi Lovato, all right? Tomorrow and Together, the K-pop group, okay? They'll be performing as well. So this is going to be a star-studded event, okay? Here's a list of Fall Out Boy. Here's a list of the performers, Anita, Cardi B, Demi Lovato, Diddy, he's getting the Global Icon uh, Award, Doja Cat, Fall Out Boy, Carol G., uh Kel Kelsey, Kelsey, Ballerini, Lil Wayne, uh Mainskin, Manskin, Megan the Stallion, Metro Boomin, Nicki Minaj, and she's also the MC. Now, this is appropriate because Nicki Minaj is not just a rapper, in my opinion. She is definitely an MC. So that's appropriate that they call her the MC that she is. And Nicki has been looking good. Did you guys see she posted to her um her Instagram recently? She looking, she looking good. I just can't wait to see the fashions, the performances. So I'm here for it on a Tuesday. That's a school night. Like really MTV? Anyway, anyway. All right, y'all. That's all I got. Ain't got no more. You let me know what you think about your vice president, Kamala Harris, getting down with the get down, trying to stanky leg her way uh, <laughs> into your, uh, into your votes. Um, what do you think about Diddy getting the Global Icon Award, Megan the Stallion, and Cardi B? Bongos, what are your thoughts? Nicki Minaj is going to be hosting and performing at the Video Music Awards. I can't wait to see it. And what are your thoughts about what Joe Budden said in his critique of Cardi B and Megan the Stallion song Bongos? Who are you looking forward to seeing performing at the MTV VMAs? Hopefully. I'll be able to stay up. If not, that's why I have DVR. All right, y'all. I am signing off. I love you for watching. Talk to you later.